Picture this, you're working on automating a website, specifically a contact form. And you think, easy peasy, I'll wrap this up in a couple of hours and then it's Netflix time. But the moment you try to manually test it, you see this little devious thing, Google CAPTCHA. Is that how you pronounce it? CAPTCHA or is it CAPTCHA? Anyways, suddenly this simple form isn't so simple anymore because you need to prove that you're not a robot. Well, Netflix will have to wait. So now you're wondering, how should you automate this? Or should you even try to automate a form with CAPTCHA? Well, you're into the right place because today we are diving into what the Selenium team officially says about automating CAPTCHAs. And spoiler alert, they are not fans. And what's Google take on testing with CAPTCHA? This one you will definitely want to hear. And of course, a hands-on demo where we will tackle CAPTCHA on a simple React site in two unique ways. So stick around till the end because you will not only learn how to navigate CAPTCHA, but also gain insights for handling similar challenges in the future. So let's get started. All right, so I'm over here on the Selenium website and on the left, we have our test practices section where they add all of the best practices and so on. And then they have a section here called Discourage and the number one on that Discourage list is CAPTCHAs. So let's read about it. So it says CAPTCHAs is short for completed automated public Turing tests to tell computers and human apart. Oh, that's a mouthful, right? Um, to be honest, this is the first time I actually found out that's what CAPTCHAs stand for. I don't know about you guys, but I guess you learn something new every day, right? All right, so as you can see right here, they said it's explicitly designed to prevent automation, so do not try. So there you go, guys. That's your answer. You should not try to automate CAPTCHA. So that's it for this video, guys. All right, I'm kidding. So there's two primary strategies to get around CAPTCHA checks. The first one is you can disable CAPTCHA in your test environment. I guess this one is kind of obvious. I mean, if you have a feature and you can't really like automate it, well, I guess disable it, right? That's, that's pretty obvious. But the second one is basically they say, add a hook to allow tests to bypass the CAPTCHA. Now, what does that mean, add a hook? Well, it kind of seems like we, we have some mechanisms over here which we can use to bypass CAPTCHA. And that there that is actually true because Google actually allows you to bypass CAPTCHA using their test keys. So let's take a look at the official uh, information on what Google says about how you can automate CAPTCHA. So I'm going to go over here. All right, so right here on the Google section, we have, I would like to run automated test with CAPTCHA. What should I do? So this is a FAQ question that they have added on the list. Now for CAPTCHA v3, you can create a separate key for your testing environment and you can ignore this part. For CAPTCHA v2, you can use the following test keys. So you will always get no CAPTCHA and all verification requests will pass. So if you're not familiar with CAPTCHA, they have different versions. The most popular ones right now are v2 and v3. So for v3, you can use a separate key for the testing environments. So essentially when you go ahead and generate a CAPTCHA for your website, you have to register for it. So you register your website and you say, okay, I want to be using CAPTCHA. So they give you a specific environment and within that environment, they, you get your site key as well as a secret key. Now that is going to be for your prediction environment, which you're going to be using. But for your automated test, you can also go ahead and create a testing key as well as a testing secret key. Now, this is possible for V3. You're going to have to go ahead and do that. For V2, it's kind of, they have one key which can be used by pretty much everyone. So you can see right over here, this is the side key and secret key that's going to be used for your testing environments. And once you do that, you're going to see CAPTCHA will look something like this. You're going to have this CAPTCHA is for testing purposes only. If you see this in product environment, then contact the site admin. So that's what we're going to be seeing if we're going to be using a test key. So I will be showing you this in a live demo. So we're going to take a look at both the ways. The first one is uh, simply disable it. The second one is actually using the side key and secret key, which is going to be for our testing environment or basically a test key. Now, by the way, I will go ahead and add the links for both of the Selenium as well as the FAQ section so that you guys can read more about it. All right, so over here, I have created a short diagram which kind of shows you how we're going to be going ahead and setting up our environment for CAPTCHA automation. So in your production environment, this is what it will look like. You can have your, let's say, automation script here. This is what pretty much you will try to do, right? You have your automation script. You want to automate your contact form. And but you're going to see that there is this little CAPTCHA thing that will come up and you're going to try to submit the form. But unfortunately, you won't be able to do that because this is going to block you right there. Now, this is how it's going to be in the prod environment. Now, as per Selenium, we have two options. The first one is to disable it. So let's see what that will look like. So for the disable option, we're going to do the same thing. We have our automation script. We have our contact form. But now you don't really see the CAPTCHA. The reason being is we have disabled it. 
once either disable it or remove it, whatever you want to do. But this is only done in the test environment. As you can see right here, this is only for the test environment. So option one, we simply go ahead and disable it. And I will show you how to do that. Then we have our option two. Option two is a little bit different. Essentially, what we do over there is same thing. We have our automation script. We have our contact form. And this time we are using a test key. As you can see right here, we have a test key that we're using. Now, this test key will allow us to go ahead and submit our form. So we can simply go ahead and select this checkbox and we can submit our form. Now, keep in mind, this is also for the test environment. We are not going to be using this test key in the production environment. So in production, the setup is going to be the same as I showed you earlier on. So we're going to keep that uh, entire setup exactly the same. And the whole idea is that you're not going to go ahead and automate this in a production environment. For prod, if you have this CAPTCHA, you simply will probably not cover that scenario or you will cover up until the point of before the submission. So you'll just assume that the submission will work because you have tested it out in your testing environment. Now, I know some people will say, hey, what if I still want to do that and I want to make sure there's a full coverage with it and all of that. Well, to be honest, guys, that's something you've got to discuss with your team and figure it out and just kind of decide pros and cons between both. If you have done it in your testing environment, CAPTCHA is a third party tool. You don't have to worry about it. If it works in your testing environment, most likely it's going to be fine in prod environment too. Now, again, I'm just throwing it out there. You have to discuss it, what works for you, what doesn't based on your own testing requirements. All right. So this is what we're going to be doing. Now let's go ahead and try out our option one, which is simply going to be going ahead and disabling this CAPTCHA form. So I will pull up the sample React site that I have built. All right, so that's my fancy site that I have put together and spent a bunch of hours doing that. <laughs> really? So over here, you have your email address and you have a simple, I'm um, not a robot, CAPTCHA, this is using V2. So I can just add in some email over here. Let's say test at mail.com. And then I'm gonna click, I'm not a robot. Until then, I can't really pretty much submit, so it's disabled. Once I click, I'm not a robot, I can go ahead and submit. And there you go, form submitted successfully. Such a fancy form, I know. So let's go ahead and disable this in our testing environment. This is a prod environment, but we're gonna disable this in the test environment. So let's see how that will work. All right, so this is my React site and I have put together this very simple app.js file over here, which actually has my capture. And you can see this capture has a side key, which I'm using. And then this has this button, which is disabled if basically it's not actually verified. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and disable this for test environment. So only if the environment is production, then only it's actually gonna work. So let's go ahead and do that. So there you go, that's what it will look like. I've simply made this change. I'm saying, hey, if the environment is production or prod, then only I want you guys to go ahead and add this CAPTCHA. So this will pretty much go ahead and disable this for any environment that is not production. We have to make the same changes for our button as well. We are simply saying, hey, make sure that the button is enabled if the CAPTCHA is disabled or removed. So let's make that change as well. So here I'm going to go ahead and simply replace this. So here I'm saying the same thing. If the environment is prod, then I want you guys to disable the button. Other than that, keep it enabled in all the testing environment. Now let's head back to our website and see what it will look like now. All right, so over here you can see that my CAPTCHA is still there and it's working successfully without any issues. Well, the reason being is we are in a production environment. So let's change that and make it update to the test environment. So that's pretty easy. I have created a nice script for that to be able to do that. So I'm just going to do npm run start test. So that means start in a test environment. So what this will do is it will just say, hey, now I'm running in a test environment. The moment I hit enter, it's going to start my app again. And there you go. My CAPTCHA is now disabled. I can simply go ahead and pretty much add in any email here and then simply go ahead and let's do this. Go ahead and basically submit my form. And it says form submitted successfully. I don't really have any issues over here. Now I can go ahead and simply do my automation on this as well. So for the automation, I'm using WebDriver IO. Feel free to use any script. So I can even show you to do the same thing in automation. But let me just show you the script. I won't run it, but pretty much we will be filling in the email and then we'll do the submit. So let me show that. All right, so this is what I'm doing. I'm simply going to my URL. I have my email. I'm adding in the submit or basically clicking on the submit button, adding a one second pause, and then I'm simply making sure that I can see that success message is showing up. So that's pretty much it. So that is how you can do it by disabling it. Now, this is kind of the easiest option, guys, because we're simply disabling the CAPTCHA. We don't really have to do any fancy mechanism over here. Now, to do that, the main important thing is this actual development change that we need to make. As you already saw, I went into the React app. 
I made this changes saying that, hey, if the environment is prod, then only show captcha. If it's not prod, then I want you guys to disable it. So that means, let's say if you're a quality engineer, you're gonna have to work with your development team to go ahead and make this change. So that's kind of the, I guess the con that you have to think about whenever you're making these changes. And if you're a developer already, then simply just go to your code and make this change. Now the option two is gonna be the same thing. You're gonna have to make some changes into your code as well, but that's gonna be more of a configuration change compared to let's say more of the actual encode change. So let me show you what that will look like. So I'm gonna go back to the React app again. All right, so I'm back in the React app and over here, let's just reverse the changes that we just made. So here, I'm gonna reverse that. Now, what we're gonna do is we will go ahead and simply run this in the test environment. Now, the moment I do that, it will simply switch from using production side key to using a test side key. Well, that's because this is how the app is configured. So let me show you where that code is. If I just scroll up, right here, you can see I have said, hey, if the environment is prod, then I want you guys to use the prod side key. If the environment is anything else, then I want you guys to use the test side key. Again, guys, you don't really have to think about how to do all of this implementation if you're not familiar with code. This is not something you have to worry about. This, let's say someone from development team will take care of this if you're a quality engineer. If you're a developer, then you will probably do implementation, something like this. I'm just showing you the process. Just focus on the process here and focus on the idea of how to automate CAPTCHA and what are some of the changes that will be required. Let's say if you're a quality engineer, then you will have to work with your team and be that advocate and tell them this is how we should be making the changes. Or in a general sense, tell them this is what we should be looking for when making the change. Implementation can be up to them. But if you're a developer, obviously you will do similar changes that I'm showing you right over here. Now again, your app will be a lot more complicated. This is much simplified version, but the general principle will remain the same. All right, so it's because of this, I'm going ahead and using the, um, let's say I'm running it in the test environment, so it will use the test side key. And right here, when I run my this script, npm start test, it will go ahead and simply not provide this prod environment. That means, hey, this is not prod, so it will just ignore that. This will turn to be, let's say, undefined, and it's gonna go ahead and run it considering it's a test environment or any non-prod environment, which is one way of saying it. If it's not prod, it's a non-prod environment. Yeah, no shit, Sherlock. <laughs> so let's run that. So I'm gonna do npm uh, run start test all right now one question that you might have is where is the exact test key and test secret key that i was telling you about so if i go to dot env you can see right over here so this is my test side key right here so this is what i'm using so for my test side key anytime i'm saying it's a non-prod it's going to use this i'm saying if it's a prod environment then it's going to go ahead and switch to this one so that's what pretty much is how it's going to look like now let's go ahead and basically run this Now this time you're gonna notice right here, our CAPTCHA is there, but you can see it's saying this is for testing purposes only. Let me see if I can zoom in, there you go. So it says this CAPTCHA is for testing purposes only, please report to the site admin if you're seeing this. That means if you're seeing this in a prod environment, then you should probably contact the site admin. Cool, so now let's see what we have to do. If I simply just click on this, it works again, but that's not the point because I'm a human. I'm actually trying to click on this, so that should work, I'm not a robot. So let's go ahead and uh, copy this and we're going to try to do automation on this flow. So I already have a script created for that. So let me pull that up. So let's pull that script. So I have a script call with CAPTCHA. Now let me show you what that script is actually doing. So same thing as before, we are going to the URL. I'm simply adding in the input email. I'm doing test at mail.com. And then I'm saying, all right, I want you to wait for the CAPTCHA to show up once the CAPTCHA is there then this is inside an iframe. Now that's kind of a tricky part, guys, if you haven't really worked with iframes and how it works. Let me just show that to you what it looked like. So if I pull back right here and do right click and inspect. All right, so I'm gonna hover over to this. Now this whole thing is part of an iframe right over here. So this is an iframe. So you have your main HTML DOM, and then within that we have an iframe, and that iframe has a title called CAPTCHA, which is what I'm using to actually automate this. So I'm saying, go to this iframe CAPTCHA, or first wait for this CAPTCHA to show up. Once it's there, I want you guys to go inside this, and within that, you're gonna see a checkbox, which is right here. So, or basically this one, right? So go ahead and select this checkbox, click on it. Once you click on it, it should automatically go ahead and enable my submit button. So that's pretty much what our flow is. So let me show that to you again in code. 
that's saying, all right, switch to this iframe, then wait for a second. And this waits, guys, I've added like a hardcoded sleep. Again, not the best practice, but I've only done it to show it to you guys. Otherwise, it, the test will run really fast and you won't really see what's happening. All right, so once we are there, it will go ahead and do a click on this. Then I'm saying, once you do the click, switch back to the parent frame. Parent frame as in like go back to the original DOM or to my website. Then from there, I want you guys to click on the submit button. And then basically my success message should show up. Let's try to run this to make sure whether this works. So I'm going to do npx wdau and we'll run wda.com.js and add in a spec. This will be test specs and with captcha. Now keep in mind, guys, I am doing this using WebDriver IO. You can do the same thing. The logic will be exactly the same, whether you use uh, Selenium, Cypress, Playwright, you name it, whichever uh, frameworks you want to use, whichever programming language you want to use, the idea and the guidelines behind how to do this is pretty much going to remain the same. Obviously, the actual code will change and it will look different. You're going to have to figure out the method of switching to iframes over there and so on. But on a high level, this is what it's going to look like. Now, let me know if you want me to do this for any specific framework or specific programming language and so on. I can go ahead and make a video on that as well. But at the end, I'm hoping that this should be enough for you to understand how to do this for regardless whichever language or framework you're using. So let's run this. All right, there you go. So I'm now running my test. And as you can see, it's going to go ahead, click on the CAPTCHA, and look at that. My test successfully passed. Perfect. So that worked without any issues. And that's because we were using a test key. If we weren't using a test key, then we would have run into an issue where it says, you can't really go ahead and bypass the CAPTCHA. So that's kind of going to add a blocker for us in order for us to do this automation. So let's do a quick review so that you guys can understand what we covered. So there's two ways how we can handle this. Option one is simply disable it. We looked at how we can do it. Simply go to your um, application code and over there say, hey, if it's a testing environment, disable this. Option two is using some kind of test key. In this case, we went ahead and looked at how we can get a test key using V2. If you are using V3, you can do the same thing over here, pretty much go to the Google CAPTCHA console. From there, here you can see I can have selected this V2 tick box, but you can do the same thing for, let's say, V3 and so on as well by just selecting V3 right here. And you can go ahead and create it for V3. And if you go to the settings, simply just add in your domain. And here I was also using localhost, so I've added that as well which will go ahead and give you your side key as well as your secret key, which you can use. Now for our V2, we can actually go ahead and use the default side key and secret key, which is what I was using in my case. Now, because of that, we actually saw this test capture that came up. And for that, we were actually able to finally do our automation and do the submission. Again, remember, this is only going to be for your test environment. For your production environment, you're going to be using your prod keys. All right, folks, we have covered a lot of ground today. We looked at what the Selenium team and Google have to say about automating CAPTCHAs. We also went hands-on with a demo showing you two different ways to tackle CAPTCHA on a React site. But let's take a step back. Just because you can automate something doesn't mean you should. It's crucial to weigh the pros and cons of each scenario. Ask yourself some questions. Is there an easier way to bypass the scenario? Can the scenarios be handled at a low level of automation? Or should you just skip this test altogether? The key here is to discuss these options with your team. As a developer or a quality engineer, it's your job to lay out all possible solutions. There's no single right answer here, but talking it out with your team can help you find the best way to handle such scenarios. So that's a wrap for today's video. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit that like button and share it with your fellow testers. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any future content. Now it's time to watch Netflix. See you in the next one.